This is the BBC. Hello. Oh, sorry, hesitation there. I'm Carrie Lloyd, and welcome to Comedy of the Week. And felicitations to your favourite seven day service of amusement. Bonjour from a show that is on four times a month and makes you laugh. Regular listeners will know that each period of time I already mentioned, we bring you a pristine wireless programme scoured from the airwaves to find the best of the hebdomadal mirth on Radio 4. You may listen to us perhaps when you are drifting off to sleep or commuting to work, mayhaps once you are at the gym or playing croquet with a friend. If you've ever played croquet, you will know that you cannot play it with flamingos, unlike the book Alice in Wonderland suggests. Oh, no, I'm deviating. It's so hard. How do they do it? If you haven't guessed already, then this week's Comedy of the Week is the brilliant Just a Minute. You see what I was doing there now, it makes sense. And yes, I did repeat week, and no, you can't buzz in. Life doesn't work like that. This week, host Nicholas Parsons is joined by super panellists Paul Merton, Giles Brandreth, Andy Hamilton and legend Sue Perkins. In the show where they have to talk about anything that comes up on the cards, today we hear all about grease paint, Amelia Earhart and dongs. So, whistles at the ready for Just a Minute! Welcome to Just a Minute. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, uh, my name is Nicholas Parsons, and as the minute waltz fades away, once more it's my huge pleasure to welcome our many listeners, not only in this country, but around the world, but also to welcome to the programme four exciting, dynamic personalities who are going to pit their wits and their talent and their verbal dexterity against each other as they try and speak on a subject that I give them, and they try and do that without hesitation, repetition or deviation. And they are seated on my right, Paul Merton and Sue Perkins, and seated on my left, Andy Hamilton and Giles Brandreth. Please welcome all four of them. <laughs> the time is, it's Hayley Sterling. She's going to help me with a score. She'll blow the whistle when the 60 seconds have elapsed. And we begin the show this week with Paul Merton. Paul, a lovely subject. A grandfather clock. Tell us something about that subject in this game, if you can, starting now. How's this for a coincidence? My grandmother died at exactly 10.27am and the time on her grandfather clock was exactly the same. <laughs> Ah, Giles, challenge. Repetition of exactly. I know, there's too much exactness, yes. Ah. Giles, straight in there. Correct challenge, a point to you. Take over the subject. And 52 seconds still available. A grandfather clock starting now. As Oscar Wilde liked to say, there's nothing quite like an unexpected death for lifting the spirits. So that when my grandfather was killed by his own grandfather clock falling on top of him, we (laughs) wondered whether it was an accident or done by design. In fact, my grandmother was the murderess. And she had a hell of a time really killing him properly. She'd wanted to do it with the cuckoo. Oh, wait a minute. Sue challenge. Was it repetition of time? There were two times in there. Yes. Well, she was a bit of a (laughs) two-timer. This was the cause of the problem. She was having an affair with the clock mender, as you would have discovered. But uh, we didn't bother to wait for that. Sue was... (laughs) Listening well, How welcome often back. Did the clock mender come round the house that you could sustain an affair with him? <laughs> make a very slow thriller, wouldn't, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Once a year. Uh, That's Sue, a bit rough. <laughs> yes. Welcome back to the show. <laughs> Lovely to, Lovely be to here. have you. You rogue. And you've got him with your first challenge, which is correct. And there are 30 seconds still available. A grandfather clock starting now. It's very hard to make a grandfather clock. For starters, you need to find a grandfather willing to put up with an enormous pendulum round his neck, added to which, of course, the timepiece needs to sit on the face. But, of course, you could make one very easily. They're to be found in post offices queuing, and thereupon you might be able to take them from said long line and say, how about being a timepiece? All you need to do is stand in my hallway and go dong upon the hour. And everybody loves, of course, to hear that. Uh, Andy Challenge. Is dong right? <laughs> <laughs> for the sound of a... That's, You're right. That's what do you mean? Is Dong, Dong right? No, no, is no. that not deviating from... You're right. ...fact? I, can I'm I not... say you're absolutely right? The Dong is the thing with the luminous nose. The Bong is what a clock does. <laughs> Surely there's a Dong. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Whatever phrase you want to use to give the resonance of a clock striking Ooh. is apt. But it was an incorrect challenge, so, Sue, you still have the subject. And there are still five seconds available. Ooh. A grandfather clock starting now. These beautiful timepieces can adorn... Ooh. Giles' challenge. A repetition of timepieces. Yes. Yes. You mentioned timepiece before, yes. Oh, he's good. <laughs> he's good. 
A correct challenge, Giles, another point. Three seconds are still available. A grandfather clock starting now. Ding! went my clock. It was a bit hysterical at the time. <laughs> In this game, whoever is speaking when the whistle goes gains an extra point. It was Giles Brandreth, so he's in the lead at the end of the round. And Sue, we're back with you very rapidly to begin the next round. Amelia Earhart. Can you tell us something about that famous airwoman starting now? Amelia Earhart was the first female aviator to cross the Atlantic Ocean. She was a bit of a tomboy, and at school people remember that she would wear breeches, shoot rats, climb trees, and generally get up to all kinds of no good. The first craft she ever made was a simple cabin that sat atop a slide and went down from the top of the shed roof to the ground. She fell off, but that was her first experience of what it was like to be briefly in the heavens. Right, John. So interesting, but there were three firsts in all. That's right, there were. There were three. Oh. So, although it was very poetic, briefly in the heavens, I wouldn't describe falling off a shed. Yes. <laughs> it was unduly it was poetic. Briefly in the heavens. Yeah. It's unduly poetic. Unduly poetic. Unduly poetic. Yeah. Go yeah. to, to A&E, so I was briefly in the heavens. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But under the pressure of keeping going on just a minute, she did lovely. very well, but she did slip up. Giles, another point to you. 30 seconds still available. Tell us something about Amelia Earhart starting now. The great mystery about Amelia Earhart is what happened to her once she disappeared, flying over a part of the world where her ship... Oh. <laughs> Andy, you've challenged. It was a, a it little was. hesitation. It, it doesn't matter if it's little or small, Andy. It's, it's it a hesitation. Huge. That's the story of my life <laughs> there. <laughs> in, in one phrase. I've, if I had a pound for every time I've heard that. Well, you had a correct challenge, Andy. Yeah, I know. You get a point for that. Well, <laughs> and you take over the subject. 21 <laughs> seconds, starting now. Amelia Earhart was, as I recall, an aviator who wore a rather fetching flying cap and a leather jacket with woolen collars. It is a mystery as to where she disappeared, but I think recently in the newspapers there was a rumour that she may have been captured by the Japanese, or have I confused her? <laughs> So Andy Hamilton was then speaking as the whistle went, gained that extra point. He's moved forward. He's uh, in second place alongside Sue Perkins, behind Giles, ahead of Paul. And uh, Andy, it's your turn to begin. The subject, downsizing. Can you... <laughs> OK, I no, want wait, that wait. very cruel laugh edited out. <laughs> I don't think of the subjects, by the way. No, I know. No, 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 no that'll be the producer. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously, you've got an agenda. Mm. <laughs> anyway, the subject, I'm sure you can go on it. 60 seconds if you want to. Downsizing, Andy. <laughs> Starting now. <laughs> Downsizing is one of those awful words that crept into our language in the 1980s and it was a time when for some reason people started bolting nouns together to make very ugly verbs, usually which were euphemisms for something rather unpleasant. If... Sue? Slight hesitation. Slight hesitation, yeah, but um, I don't think it was enough. I don't want charity. <laughs> No, but what I do in this show, Andy, you haven't been in so long, I give the benefit of the doubt on occasions. Well, that's, and if I can redress the balance later to Sue, kind. I will. So I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt and say it wasn't hesitated, it was not. So he gets a point for an incorrect challenge. <laughs> he has downsizing still. 39 seconds, starting now. If... Uh, poor challenge. Well, that was hesitation. No, it wasn't. He didn't start. <laughs> Wasn't it? No, no, he definitely didn't. What was didn't. that gap then between you stopping and Andy starting? <laughs> Is there what a difference between pause and hesitation? Yeah. Yeah, dramatic pausing, oh, that's I what I'm doing. Okay, fair yeah. enough. It's because of my okay, Shakespearean right. training. Well, no. <laughs> right. What if I start before the buzzer without yeah, resolving? No, no, that'll solve it. That'll solve it. So another incorrect challenge, that'll Andy. Incorrect another point to you. 30 seconds still available. Downsizing, starting now. If. Uh, <laughs> Paul, he, yeah. you could have baked a cake there. Yeah. <laughs> Sue's telling me I, I could have baked a cake. Yes. I, I agree with you on that. That was a hesitation. It was a definite hesitation. Honestly. Another point to you. Not another point, your first point, actually. Yes, thank you very much. <laughs> 
37 seconds available, Paul. Downsizing starting now. I realise that downsizing was our only option as we looked to our future. The bank balance was no longer what it should have been. The money behind the sofa had long run out. We were going to have to find a bungalow. But what a beautiful building we saw. On the edge of Earl's Court and the edge in the Rio de Janeiro jungle, it was a huge place. We admired... Giles Chan. The edge of Earl's Court and the edge of the, the Rio, Rio de Janeiro, Janeiro jungle. jungle. Repetition of the word edge, yes. E-D-G-E. That's yes. right, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying Ooh. to connect... Uh... That stopped my fun. Yeah. <laughs> that stopped everybody's fun. <laughs> I was still trying to He's connect... He's known for it, Paul. <laughs> if there's fun to be had, Giles will stop it. <laughs> you can talk about a bungalow being from here to Earl's Court, the uh, Rio de Janeiro, that's all right. Uh... <laughs> 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 so, Giles, yeah, we have to give it to you. 19 oh, yeah. seconds and uh, downsizing starting now. My wife says that the first thing she will do when I die, before calling the undertakers, will be to get the people who provide the skip so that she can do the downsizing that she has wanted to be doing for years immediately on my demise. All the jumpers will be going in, followed by the teddy bears, followed by all the... Oh. Followed... All uh, challenge. Oh, uh, the followed, followed, followed by. Yes. Followed by, yes. Ted, followed yes. By, yes. And I'm afraid the followed by. Is it did too early to book the skip? No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's the first thing she'd be doing, Giles. Okay. <laughs> you did yeah. manage to get in just before the whistle, um, Paul, and you've got another point, and you have half a second to oh. go. <laughs> Downsizing starting now. I'd like. <laughs> So at the end of that round, we have uh, Giles still in the lead. Followed, they're all one point behind each other. Then Andy, then Sue Perkins, and then Paul Merton. And Giles, we're with you to begin. And the subject, grease paint. 60 seconds starting now. Ah, the smell of the grease paint, the roar of the crowd. I have recently been reading the fine biography of that great thespian, Sir Laurence Olivier, by the biographer Anthony <coughs> Holden. Sue oh. Challenge. Repetition of by. Two byes. Two oh, byes. Yeah. Double byes. Oh, yes. Yeah. Bye well, bye. listen, <laughs> what? <laughs> Do we have a fourth official that we can send yeah. it up to? There's Hawkeye in can the just, booth. Charles, can you just replay what you did? Mm, yeah, I will be doing that at home quietly. <laughs> <laughs> Giles has little model figures of us all which he rearranges when he gets home <laughs> and records the show so he comes out top. <laughs> I've got one as well. You all come out top in this show. Exactly. Sue, so, correct challenge. In 49 seconds, tell us something about grease paint starting now. How I love the slap of grease paint on me, protecting, of course, the audience from my real face, which sadly is not doing well under the burden of time. There is something incredible. Giles, challenge. Deviation. I don't think she's ever looked more lovely. Oh, Giles. <laughs> oh, Giles. Oh. I'm happy to lose a point. Can you... I just think it should be stated. There's a warning signal going off in my head. <laughs> I'm reaching for the alarm in my bag. Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> Within the rules of the yes. game, it is deviation. Yes. She's telling us that she wears makeup to disguise yes. her face. She clearly is wearing no makeup at all. The freshness of I'm her face. I'm on radio. If this was on television, there'd be a riot. <laughs> the freshness of her face is a joy to behold. Yes. The tone of that skin, those yes. lovely eyes. Yes. The spectacles that yes. are in themselves an erotic charge. <laughs> I wouldn't like to be with you in an optician. <laughs> <laughs> but, Sue, he like didn't that. have a challenge within the rules of just a minute, so you have a point. You keep the subject. Grease paint starting now. I love the selection of things on the makeup artist's bench. Mascara, powder puffs, incredible rich colours of eyeshadow that glisten. Would you like some gloss on your lips, she says, as if I'll understand. I have no idea. It is an ancient and mystic art, but I succumb. I sit in my chair and let myself be painted into the person you may recognise. And I love it. It's playtime. Within that, I can be anything I want, and I choose to be a myopic woman in her late 40s, talking bilge. Uh, <laughs> and you challenge. Surely Sue can't be in her late 40s. That's... <laughs> that's just not possible. I mean, uh, you know, as, as Giles was saying so fulsomely <laughs> earlier. So you're saying, uh, metaphorically, it's, uh, it's deviation. deviation. Yes. Deviation from... <laughs> From the truth. Yes. Yes. I think what I have to do here is give you a bonus point for a delightful Ooh. challenge. For charm. <laughs> <laughs> for 
but it wasn't correct within the rules of just a minute. Oh, okay. So Sue Perkins has another point, and she still has six seconds on grease paint starting now. <laughs> grease paint, the ideal camouflage, going into battle down the tinsel mines. Look at me. <laughs> <laughs> So Sue Perkins, with great aplomb, kept moving forward in that round and against the challenges she got against her. I'm coming uh, here again, I'll tell you. Yeah. <laughs> well, you've now taken the lead. You're one ahead of Andy and uh, Giles and two or three ahead of Paul. And Paul, it's your turn to begin mm. the next round. Tahiti. Tahiti is a subject, 60 seconds as usual, starting now. 25 years ago, I visited Tahiti, and I'm afraid it was an absolute dump. The hotel we stayed in was ridden with feral cats, who I don't know what they were living on, but it certainly wasn't the food that was being served up. It was awful, but since then, it might well have changed. They may well have a slogan that says, Tahiti, not as bad as it used to be, or <laughs> looking to get better. But I'm afraid the Tahiti that we think of in the paintings that were done at the turn of the century, the previous hundred years, not the one that's just gone, can Conjures up a romantic image of Hawaiian girls on holiday on Tahiti, wearing layers and flowers and playing the ukulele. Uh, Andy Jones. Why are there Hawaiian girls on Tahiti? Because they're on, <laughs> they're on holiday. They're on holiday. Hawaiian girls on holiday in Tahiti. <laughs> It's fine. I'll, I'll accept the they're going on holiday going explanation. On holiday? It makes as much sense as anything else, <laughs> so that's fine. Have, they shouldn't have gone to Tahiti. <laughs> right. I'll do what I did before, Andy, because we do enjoy your interruptions and, <laughs> and the humour you generate. So a bonus point to Andy there. Paul was interrupted. He gets a point. He keeps the subject. There are 25 seconds still available, Paul. Seconds. Tahiti, starting now. The most beautiful place I've ever been. <laughs> Sue, you challenge oh, first. I've place. Yes. <laughs> so you have a correct challenge. Sue, another point. 23 seconds available. Tahiti, starting now. Tahiti, French Polynesia, where the captains used to go on holiday. Cook, Blythe. He, the first one, was there so long, his wife said, where on earth have you been? When he finally got round to returning home after some 20 years. Blythe, of course, and that fame... Um, no. Paul challenge. Uh, unfortunately, repetition of Blythe. Yes. That's right. And Bly didn't go to Tahiti. It was the... It was did the, he? The, the, did. I think he did. That was when the mutiny oh, on God. the bounty yes, was. Yes, I'm going back to front. He, yes, they put him in the boat and they went away. It was Christian who stayed on board. I'm you sure must sorry, remember, yeah. Nicholas, you were doing the on-board entertainment. <laughs> <laughs> Show you how generous I am. Yeah. Give him they, a bonus point for that. It went so well, that. they threatened to drop him off a time. <laughs> <laughs> right, Paul, it's another point for that. And uh, seven seconds available. Tahiti is starting now. As the statues of Nicholas Parsons were built across the island of Tahiti, the natives looked up and said, that's a cravat we can follow to the end of the earth. <laughs> So Paul Martin was then speaking as a whistle when gained that extra point, and he's crept up on the others. He's now equal with Andy Hamilton, just behind Sue Perkins, ahead of Giles Brandreth. And Sue, we're with you to begin, and the subject now is cold calling. Talk about it if you can, starting now. Have you ever been missold PPI insurance? <laughs> and Giles Jones. Repetition of P. Oh! Oh. Yeah, well, well listen, Giles, well listen. And to think I was on the verge of capitulating to you, Brandon. <laughs> so, Giles, yes, well listen, another point to you. Cold calling is with you now. 56 seconds available, starting now. Cold calling is very bad manners. Wheezing, sneezing, snuffling at the end of the line. It is as bad... Sue challenge. That's heavy breathing, isn't it? I don't think, <laughs> think if they're doing just that, they've either got hay fever or it's a sexy call. Now, I was talking about phoning up when you've got a cold. It's very bad manners. I know you were, but you didn't quite convey that so well, did you? Mm -hmm. I think you'll have the benefit of the doubt, Giles. An incorrect challenge. Keep the subject. Another point. 49 seconds available. Cold calling is starting now. It is for this reason, cold calling, that we now have our delightful young au pair, a Hawaiian girl called Tahiti, to answer the telephone for us. Uh, Andy challenge. What the hell is a Hawaiian girl? <laughs> She's, that's a woman born in Hawaii that lives in Newcastle. <laughs> <laughs> Who were you? Who were you? 
Andy, you've got it this time. A point to you, a correct challenge. <laughs> 40 seconds available. Tell us something about cold calling starting now. The other day, I received some cold calling. A man rang and said, am I talking to Mr. Hamilton? And I said, no, I'm the burglar. I've just killed him. <laughs> this, this is quite a... Uh, Sue Chan. Uh, repetition of this. Just this. Well, this. they laughed. You oh, see? No, 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 no. Got in That's the way. The, yeah, but it, yeah. Sue was correct, no, unfortunately. Because we did enjoy it. She's Andy. lovely, isn't she? Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't give it back to you for flattery. No, I know. Uh, 28 seconds, for Sue, with you, cold calling, starting now. Whenever I get a cold caller, I like to engage them in conversation. Once they finish their sales pitch, I'll take a long, deep breath and talk about my divorce and where the kids are going on their holidays and how sad I am that my old car no longer works. And I will maintain this endless monologue until they realise what it is like to receive unsolicited information into their lug holes. Because the point is this, you think as the phone rings, that you're going to be speaking to a friend. Mm. So, two persons speaking as a whistle win again, that extra point, and she's just taken the lead ahead of the other three. And Andy Hamilton, we're back with you to begin. And the subject now is runner beans. Telling us something about those delicious vegetables in this game, starting now. Runner beans must be the most misleadingly named vegetable that you can purchase from your greengrocers. Because as far as I am aware, runner beans have no legs. Therefore, they are incapable of running or even breaking into a mild jog. It's a misnomer. Climbing beans would be acceptable, or possibly dull, stringy, tasteless beans. <laughs> But not runner beans. Beans are of their nature, not athletic. Tom Courtney was never offered the lead part in a film called The Loneliness of the Long Distance Bean. <laughs> uh, who challenged was Paul? Uh, well, it was a slight hesitation. Mm. Paul, the correct challenge. You have the subject, you have runner beans and the... Uh, 20 seconds available, starting now. The Vegetable Olympics were hotting up. Everybody looked towards the runner beans to get a title for our country. A medal was in the off in bronze, gold or silver. These runner beans show they were made of the right stuff. As the first... Oh. Oh. I couldn't remember if it was a whistle or a gun. It's a gun that goes off, isn't it? Yeah, yeah that's right, yeah. Sue Perkins, you tell uh, Hesitation. Absolutely. There was, yes. Another point to you. And seven seconds available, Ooh, seven. runner beans starting now. I love runner beans, and they're such fun to grow. The eating, not so great, but wow, to plant them, and then when they're done... Mm. <laughs> so Sue Perkins was speaking as a whistle when gained that extra point and has increased her lead over the other three who are all equal in second place. And Giles, we're back with you to begin. And the subject now is a conversation with my hairdresser. 60 seconds, starting now. How do you like your hair cut in silence? Used to be my reply. But since I have met this charming hairdresser... Uh, Andy Challenge. Well, I thought the subject was a conversation with my hairdresser. Ooh, that's right, yeah. But you said it, so surely it should be a conversation with Nicholas's hairdresser. <laughs> As you were about to discover, we share a hairdresser. Oh, right, okay. <laughs> Andy, Andy, that's a very shrewd observation, but... Within the rules of just a minute, it does make it very difficult to judge. But as you're such a clever player of the game, give him another bonus point. <laughs> 54 seconds, still with you, Giles. A conversation with my hairdresser starting now. I was recently introduced to my new hairdresser by Nicholas Parsons, who was passing on to me his old hairdresser. The girl is charming. He met her in a nail bar at King's Cross. She is of Tahitian extraction. Her name, curiously though, is Ilmgard. And she said to me, have you ever thought of entering Celebrity Love Island? I think you have got exactly what it takes. Not necessarily uh, up top. So, so uh, this was a conversation with my hairdresser. Sir. Yes. It sounds like a conversation with my psychiatrist. What's going on? <laughs> no, you Ooh. gossip with your hairdresser. You, you talk about Love Island. Of course. You find you do. you're there long enough for that to happen? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think that's very devious, the idea that he might be young enough to be on Love Island. Oh, I, I would pay good money to see that. You would? Him in a mankini. <laughs> Stretching his Brandreth magnificence yeah. across a sun lounger. Yeah. Yes, I would. With Anne Whittaker and Edwina yes. Curry. Yeah. 
Paul, I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt Thank on this occasion. For that. A point to you, 30 seconds, a conversation with my hairdresser starting now. When good hairdressers came to the London suburb of Morden, people were rather studiously avoiding it because they weren't suspicious of what was going on. A man, as I was sitting there having my hair cut one day, popped his head round the door and says, do you do proper haircuts in here? I was very embarrassed at the time because already I found the whole prospect of having my hair cut deeply reddening. <laughs> Sue Challenge. Tradition of haircuts. Mm. Yeah. Oh, yes. Haircut. Oh, yes. Four seconds available, Sue, on a conversation with my hairdresser starting now. I think I'm the only person ever to have said, a deep, rich perm, please, madam. <laughs> <laughs> and we're moving into the final round. Oh, no. <gasps> Right, let me give you the situation if you're interested in the points. In second place, we have three equal players, Giles Brand with Andy Hamilton and Paul Merton, and they're trailing Sue Perkins, who's in the lead, by four or five or six points ahead of them. Oh, it's a but wreck. Paul, it's we're a back wreck. with you to begin. <laughs> yes. And the subject is self-improvement. 60 seconds are starting now. At the turn of the 20th century, gramophone records became very popular, as indeed did gramophones. And people... Giles. A gramophone and gramophones. I know, I was just pondering that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Gramophone, I thought, had been repeated, but it was in the plural the second time. That's right. So an incorrect challenge, Paul. Another point to you. 54 seconds available. Self-improvement starting now. Various self-improvement discs became very popular. How to speak to a cockney. Hello, Londoner. I want to speak to... Uh, <laughs> Andy, you challenge first. There's a little hesitation yeah. on Paul's cockney there. I think yeah, he was right, yeah. Yeah. So, Just... Andy, correct challenge. 46 seconds available. Tell us something about self-improvement starting now. Self-improvement can be very difficult. For instance, if you ask Sue Perkins, how do you improve on perfection? <laughs> it's impossible. For some people, it is just a mountain too high to climb. I have been on a self-improvement course, and I attempted to become a brain surgeon. That was a disaster. Many people died. <laughs> but... Too challenge. Hesitation. Yeah. No, he didn't hesitate. He said it, got the laugh, and he carried on through the laugh. Did I? No. Yes, you did. <laughs> I have to say, inside my head, I know that I hesitated, <laughs> if, I'm, if I'm strictly you're, honest. You're too honest when I'm trying to help you. Yes, yeah. I know. It's been a failing all my life. <laughs> uh, no, I'm going to give you another benefit of the doubt and say that uh, you didn't pause long enough. Nicholas, <laughs> I really appreciate it, but it's going to be humiliating after a while. <laughs> If, if all of my points are either for grovelling to sue <laughs> or getting the benefit of the doubt, you know. No, they're very genuinely earned, most of oh, them. OK. And you're not going to win anyway, so... No. <laughs> now, now I understand. That's <laughs> Now I so understand. So Andy gets another point. Yeah. Yay. 23 seconds still available. Yeah. What's Andy? the subject? <laughs> Don't tell it. Don't tell it. <laughs> Self-improvement. Oh, yes. <laughs> Self-improvement. And 23 seconds starting now. I once went on a training program of self-improvement, which was hosted by an American guy who looked like an extra out of Starsky and Hutch. He listed all the qualities that we would need to catch. Uh, Giles Challenge. I think there was then a hesitation. There was a hesitation there. Yeah. Another point to you, Giles. There are eight seconds available. Self-improvement starting now. When it comes to self-improvement, what I do have to improve is my posture. And to help me with this, I have two words. Nipples leading. When I got that... <laughs> well, I mean, what a way to finish the show, yeah. with nipples. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, still, it's a situation where my... You have three people in second place. And, Sue, you have more points than anybody else. So if you're interested, we say, you are the winner this week. Yeah. So, it only remains for me to say thank you to these four fine players of the game, Paul Merton, Sue Perkins, Andy Hamilton and Giles Brandreth. We thank our producer, Victoria Lloyd. We're indebted to Ian Messiter, who created this amazing game. I'm grateful to Hayley Sterling, who's helped me with the score, blown her whistle with such style. So from our audience, from me, Nicholas Parsons, thank you. Tune in again at the same time when we take to the air and we play Just a Minute! <laughs>
That was just a minute! And it's available on iPlayer Radio. Or you can simply rewind this podcast to listen again. I mean, you can rewind in 15-second segments, but it'd take you ages. Or you could just reload it and then pretend to rewind it by putting a pencil in a hole and turning it over and over again whilst it was attached to some string, if you miss that sort of thing. And I know some of you do. That's it from me this week. If you've listened this far, are you OK? What happened? Did you fall asleep? Oh, can you hear me in your dreams? Mmm, dream about cake. Maybe bake a cake and just encourage more cake in the world or give out cake for free wherever you go. Just a thought. I've been Carrie Lloyd. You've been listening to Comedy of the Week podcast. Keep going. If you got dressed today, you've basically won. <laughs>